I was able to create this YouTube idea generator app quickly without coding. So this app, based on the topic, it's going to search the YouTube for relevant information, such as the trending videos. Then it uses ChatGPT for trend analysis and idea generation for next video using a tool called Data Button. And I'm going to show you how you can do this right now. It's an AI app builder. By just giving prompts, you are able to create the app. You also have software engineers to support you if you have any issues building your app. You can see various examples on their website was built using this data button app. In this, we'll be seeing how you can create a basic application, how to add AI agents plus grok inference to make the AI agents faster. Next, how you can test this directly from the interface and add the authentication. So how this differs from bolt.new and v0. Thanks to data button for sponsoring this video. So I will put the link in the description to sign in. So once after you sign in, you will be presented with a screen like this. With the details about the app, the pitch, app description, target audience, and design guidelines. The app name is YouTube Idea Generator, and the pitch is create a tool that combines YouTube analytics with AI to discover trending topics and generate strategic video ideas. App description. It uses YouTube API to extract trending videos and popular content based on an input topic then leverages OpenAI's API to generate creative video ideas and content strategies. Target audience, content creators. You have UI library such as Tailwind or Shatsian. I'm going to use Shatsian. Main screen desktop and dark mode, my preferred mode. Design style, modern. That's it. I gave the basic information. Now generate starting point with AI, clicking on that. Now it's initializing the app, then extracting design guidelines generating the plan and finally writing the code. It took a minute and now it's all ready. Now we got the starting point. This is super amazing. Just within a minute, you are able to view the application which it generated, transform your YouTube content strategy just by providing OpenAI API key and YouTube API key. By entering a topic, it should be able to automatically generate ideas. Let's see if it works. Adding my OpenAI API key, which you can generate from platform.openai.com to integrate your large language model or the AI. Next, entering the YouTube API key, which you can generate from console.cloud.google.com. I will put all the link in the description below. So I've added that, now generating ideas. So I'm going to type AI and clicking generate ideas. So it didn't come up with ideas, which is expected because this generated only the front end. Now we need a back end. So this tool includes even the back end. So let's say to this agent, it didn't work when I clicked generate content ideas. Now the agent is thinking, now it's writing the backend code. So if you see on the left hand side, you got pages, UI components, UI files, backend, media files, and internal storage. The key thing is that everything is divided in its own area. Here you can see the backend for YouTube ideas is automatically writing the code in Python. This is one of the key advantage because most of the AI tools is written in Python. So you got clear differentiation. So you got the Python code here, front end code in chat scene. We can see the logs clearly what's happening behind the scenes here. Now the agent completed the task of creating the backend with YouTube idea generation. So let's test this by going to the homepage, adding my YouTube key and API key, generate ideas for AI. Now here is the trending videos and generated video ideas, dining with AI, the future of food, AI in everyday life, AI versus artist. This is really nice. Just with few steps, I was able to create this application and it is working as you can see here. Now I can finally deploy the application. So next, deploying. Clicking the deploy, you can provide your link path or you can even use your custom domain here. For now, I'm going to use the free domain URL and then clicking deploy app starting deploying in the log at the bottom you can see build for deployment started successfully deployed app now i can visit the url by clicking this and here is the published application just done within few minutes here you got light mode and dark mode you are also able to edit the code by just clicking this edit code and you can see all the code you can directly edit from the browser similarly for the backend click on the backend code and you are able to edit all this code you have the ability to view in 
tablet mode and mobile format. So you can test its responsiveness. That is really cool. Next, adding AI agents to this application and using Grok API instead of OpenAI to make these AI agents super fast. Grok is to provide fast AI inference and using Phi data to build our AI agents. So asking the agent, replace OpenAI SDK with Phi data agents, provide DuckDuckGo search tool to the AI agents to search for information regarding each idea, use Llama 3 LLM using Grok, and then clicking enter. The capability of this is to search the internet. If it doesn't know information of any of this, then implement those changes based on that. That is really nice. And now it updated the backend and also the frontend. And here is the update. You might have a question, what is frontend and what is backend? Imagine a restaurant, that's where you order things. Kitchen is the place where you make food. So all the logic happens in the backend and you will view all the details in the frontend. So in this data button, I see a clear differentiation between the frontend, UI, UI files, and the backend. So the backend is used with fast API. That is a Python package to create endpoints, endpoints like this, slash generate ideas. So in this example, the endpoint is slash menu. And when the user asks, can I see the menu please, using this slash menu endpoint, then the menu will be returned. Similarly, order endpoint to place an order. And this backend is imported to the frontend using something called brain. So if I go to home and edit code, you can see import brain from brain. And here it mentions brain.generate ideas. This will automatically call the backend endpoint generate ideas. That is really nice, the way it is structured. And from what I tested, it's a robust Python backend. Next, testing. So in the data button interface, there's an option called hashtag. So you can click on that. So here is the API YouTube ideas, generate ideas endpoint. That is a brain. So clicking on that and just saying, test the endpoint. This is just to test the backend. And now it called the endpoint. Now it's asking for YouTube API key to test the function. So adding my API key. And now I can see there is an error. API key not valid. So this agent is automatically read the log and based on that, update the code. One more thing I need to remind this agent that I need to use Grok API key instead of OpenAI API key. So copying the error, pasting it here, just saying it should be Grok API key, and then clicking enter. I can see an error here. So if you are in a state where you are not able to fix this, you are able to contact the software engineers, but I can clearly understand what's happening behind the scenes because it's using assistant instead of agent. So what I'm going to do is, provide the document for Phi data agents, providing an example code and providing the code for how to implement in Grok and clicking enter. Now the endpoint is working successfully. That is really good. And even the application is working with Grok and AI agents. You can easily improve this from here by doing more prompts. Finally, adding built-in authentication. So at the top left-hand side, you can see settings icon or the config icon, click on that. And in the extension section, there is Firebase authentication. Click on that. Now you need to get this configuration from Firebase. Just go to Firebase console, create a project, go to project settings. There you will have the configuration. So I'm going to copy the configuration and pasting it here and saving it. After that, you need to add the domain name to Firebase, that is data button. In the Firebase, under authentication, I've added Google and email password to login. And then in the settings, authorized domain, I've added data button dot app by adding domain. That's it. Coming back to data button and clicking install for the Firebase. Installation started. And here is the authentication, sign in with Google. And you can just click and sign in with your Google account. If you want to modify this interface, you can see the login here. There you can ask the AI agent to modify the interface. As simple as that. So how this differs from bolt.new and v0. In bolt.new, there is no predefined backend and frontend. And each time you build an application, the structure is going to be different. And you need to make your custom built authentication. But in data button, you got clear demarcation between frontend, backend, and authentication. Agent having the ability to search the internet, go through the logs and fix errors is one more addition, which is same as bolt.new. Additionally, you have the software engineer 
to talk to if you have any issues with building the application. And I'm really excited about this. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this. And I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.